Katie, what's going on? Why are you so stressed? I don't know a darn thing about Daniel Webster and I have to do a project on him. Here, not to worry Katie, let me show you this very informative video that highlights all of Daniel Webster's contributions to his era, <laughs> lifetime achievements, and other considerations. Heck, if a class were voting on it, I'd, ex I'd expect it to get all the votes. All of them. Okay. Here, let me pull it up right now. Daniel Webster was an American statesman who earned his fame for his secure support of the federal government and his skills as an orator. Daniel Webster was born in Salisbury, New Hampshire on January 18, 1782, and died at the age of 70 on October 24th in the year 1852. He served in the U.S. Supreme Court, but he was originally a lawyer, later being selected as a New Hampshire congressman in 1813. He then went on to become the Massachusetts congressman and senator, and then became the U.S. Secretary of State in 1841. He helped ease border tensions with Britain through negotiations of the Webster-Ashburn Treaty in 1842 as well. The Webster-Ashburn Treaty, signed August 9, 1842, was a treaty that resolved several border issues between the United States and the British North American colonies. Despite his standing as Whig leader, Webster was never able to secure his party's nomination for the U.S. presidency. He did, although, reject the position of vice president, however, to become the United States Secretary of State under President William Henry Harrison and John Tyler. Webster was also a member of the Great Triumvirate, a group of the time's most powerful and influential political figures. It was composed of Henry Clay, John C. Calhoun, and none other than Denton Webster. For the majority of the first half of the 1800s, these three men were in charge of most of the internal dealings of the country. Each was assigned a region of the nation for which his interests and issues they were responsible. Daniel Webster, being one senator of New Hampshire and Massachusetts, was tasked with representing New England. Webster solved many issues affecting the people of New England and pursued many of their interests. He also, along with Clay and Calhoun, became essential to the creation of the Compromise of 1850. This compromise put in place a temporary solution to the problem of slavery, sawing the Civil War for 10 years. Webster gained fame for his support of a strong federal government, although he had been a rather extreme advocate of states' rights in the beginning of his 40 years in public life. He opposed the War of 1812 and hinted at nullification. As a congressman and senator from Massachusetts, he became a leading advocate of federal action to stimulate the economy through protective tariffs, transportation improvements, and a national bank. He spoke against Texas annexing and going to war with Mexico. He held, however, that no law was needed to prevent further extension of slavery when he urged the Compromise of 1850 as a union-saving measure. As Secretary of State, Webster earned a reputation as one of the greatest ever to hold the office. His most notable achievement was the negotiation of the Webster-Ashburn Treaty, which settled a long-standing dispute over the Maine and New Brunswick boundary and ended a threat of war between Great Britain and the United States. The most highly paid attorney of his time, Webster exerted considerable influence on the development of constitutional law. The Supreme Court, under Chief Justice John Marshall, adopted Webster's arguments in a number of significant cases, among them the Dartmouth College v. Woodward, McCullough v. Maryland, and Gibbons v. Oudkin. These decisions strengthened the federal government as against the state's governments, the judiciary as against the legislative and executive branches, and commercial and industrial against agricultural interests. As an orator, Webster had no equal among his peers. He reached the height of his eloquence in his reply to the nullificationist Robert Y. Hayne, a reply that concluded with the words, Liberty, Union, now forever, one and inseparable. Webster was born into a family of ten children, him being the ninth. He was the son of Ebenezer Webster, a farmer and a tavern keeper who once fought in the American Revolution. As he grew up, he quickly gained the name of Little Black Dan or Black Dan when he was older for his dark hair, complexion, and a side of his personality. As a young boy, Webster showed signs of his future as one of the greatest orators of all time. His siblings taught him how to read fairly young, and soon enough he was performing recitations and readings for his family in his father's tavern. Webster then attended Dartmouth College at the young age of 15, where he was deemed one of the best at public speaking. As we have seen, this talent was put to good use. Wow, who would have thought you'd learn so much about Daniel Webster in one video? Heck, if I was in the inductee committee at Antebellum University, 
where the hall is dedicated to honoring those people who had the greatest lasting impact on the antebellum period in American history, I would definitely induct Daniel Webster. And if you wouldn't, you're wrong. And that's an insult to all the people who worked on this project, such as... Everywhere you look.